Tokyo admits extensive damage caused by the atomic bomb at Hiroshima. New air attacks have been thrown against Japan. Washington and other allied capitals are buzzing with speculation about the new bomb and its possibilities. Now here's Alan Jackson with a CBS feature, News of the World. Almost 24 hours have passed since we first learned of the atomic bomb and its use against the city of Japan. And even now, after hearing many times the description of this new weapon, its capabilities continue to tempt human imagination. Our senses reel in awe from the staggering import of this new advancement in science. Words written and spoken on the subject since the announcement first came from President Truman about 11 o'clock yesterday morning already are encyclopedic in volume. And yet the subject grows more interesting and fantastic with each new detail, however minute. What this new discovery can mean for a peacetime world, even though its commercial possibilities lie years, if not generations ahead, is almost beyond the comprehension of mere humans. One bomb has been tested, and results were noted for hundreds of miles around. One bomb has been dropped on a Japanese city. So far, headquarters hasn't been able to determine the amount of damage caused, for photographic planes that flew over the ill-fated town of Hiroshima several hours later still were unable to pierce the heavy pall of smoke and dust that clouded out that particular spot of Japan. Tokyo Radio this morning finally acknowledged the use of the atomic bomb against Hiroshima and admitted that extensive damage was done. Apparently, the damage was so great that the Japs aren't sure yet what hit the place, for they speak of bombs in the plural, though headquarters tells us that only one bomb was dropped. And a few moments ago, the Japanese Domei News Agency in another broadcast from Japan said that the atomic bomb was dropped by parachute and exploded in the air before reaching the ground. That's a Japanese explanation. Earlier, in an indirect reference to the amount of damage caused, the Japs announced that all railroad service in the Hiroshima area had been canceled. Well, that, at the moment, is about all we know of what happened when the atomic bomb landed in Hiroshima, Japan. More figures and revealing descriptions of the damage undoubtedly will be available later, when the skies above Hiroshima clear sufficiently for our airmen to fly over and view the results of their work. In comparison with this history-making development, other activity on the war fronts is practically routine in character, but it's just as important nevertheless. Tokyo tells of new Mustang fighter plane attacks against the Tokyo area this morning, and also speaks of British planes in action out there, perhaps British land planes flying against Japan for the first time. That's only a guess so far, for there's been nothing on this from headquarters. Headquarters does tell us of a B-29 strike against the big Toku Toyokawa naval arsenal yesterday noon and an attack against a port in Kyushu by some 400 fighters and bombers of the Far East Air Force based on Okinawa. Excellent results in both cases. Chinese troops have captured another road junction about 125 miles southwest of Canton, tightening their grip on a 50-mile stretch of the so-called invasion coast west of Hong Kong. Thus the war against the Japanese goes on, but underneath all the news is a feeling of bigger developments to come as a result of the atomic bomb. Some Washington sources, for instance, are speculating that perhaps Tokyo itself or one of Japan's other large industrial cities might be the next target for the atomic bomb. In England, London newspapers this morning are speculating that a new surrender ultimatum to Japan may be likely soon. Here at home, Washington, as other allied capitals, is buzzing with the news of the atomic bomb, the tremendous secret that was kept so well for so long, the importance the discovery will have in the Pacific War and what it may mean in the years of peace ahead. For that news, we take you now to CBS Washington, Gunner Beck reporting. This city, where the atomic bomb had much of its origin and proved to be the war's best kept secret, this morning is like any other city in the world, in that it's trying to comprehend what the atomic bomb is going to mean to the future. The announcement of the capture of atomic energy is reaching all corners of Washington this morning. The wives of officers and civilians, for example, officers and civilians who worked on it since 1939, are learning for the first time why their husbands were so frequently late for dinner and so often mysteriously out of town. President Truman has charged Congress with the care of this discovery that will ultimately revolutionize our way of life. And congressmen this morning are trying to find out how great that responsibility is. Only a few knew much about the progress of the atomic research. In the embassies, no doubt, diplomats this morning are pondering the significance 
of the new age of atomic energy in international relations. And Washington has had its wilder kind of speculation, too. In response to requests, officials at George Washington University say they doubt that the faint earth murmur recorded on their seismograph on Sunday, the day the first atomic bomb was dropped on Japan, was set in motion by that explosion. As far as the war is concerned, military observers here don't detect any disposition yet on the part of the army to think that the war will end quickly. But the significance of this new weapon is being driven home to the Japanese in day and night broadcasts by shortwave to the main islands. These broadcasts stress President Truman's promise that more and bigger atomic bombs are on the way. Observers here predict that there will be another official surrender ultimatum, possibly with a 48-hour time limit. Either before or probably after the ultimatum, if there's a rejection, it's believed here that the 20,000-ton TNT force of the next atomic bomb will be dropped on Tokyo itself. In Congress, Chairman Thomas of the Senate Military Committee says his group is ready to expedite legislation setting up a peacetime control commission over the sensational discovery as requested by President Truman. Senator Thomas felt that the new bomb will shorten the war materially. Senator O'Mahony of the Appropriations Committee said that Congress will quickly vote the money to turn research in atomic energy toward its distant goal of replacing coal, oil, and other power sources. That goal, the Secretary of War and President Truman agreed, is really far distant. And there's no question in congressional minds so far that the new discovery must remain under government control. The public as a whole must have access to it, Senator O'Mahony said. It can't be allowed to go into private domain. But frankly, Congress yet hasn't had a chance to look fully at its new responsibility in handling a force that promises to reorganize our economy. This is Gunner back in Washington, returning you to Alan Jackson in New York. Excitement continues high in the town of Oak Ridge, Tennessee today, following the dramatic revelation that Oak Ridge is the home of the mighty atomic bomb. For the first time since the vast project was begun slightly less than three years ago, some 75,000 residents of Oak Ridge now know what was being manufactured there. Surprise was complete and widespread when the secret was first released in Washington yesterday. Newspapers sold in Oak Ridge for a dollar apiece. Thousands of workmen employed on the project heard the news with as much surprise and exhilaration as anyone else throughout the country, but they remained at their jobs without celebration. And that's the top news from Oak Ridge.